please uh, i need the permission to share the screen yeah, yeah I, and i will request all the panelists as well as moderators we will have a lot of discussion uh, maybe at the end and couple of questions in between also are okay yes sir please show to you yeah yes sir. is my screen visible yeah yeah very well very well so uh, thank you sipla and thank you lalit sir for this opportunity it's my good fortune to present in front of all the stalwarts of the india and warm regards to them and respect to my guru dr pramod bende sir so i begin my presentation on principle of ocity and basic interpretation in the retinal diseases i have no financial interest in this presentation um so ocit is the most used diagnostic tool available it's non invasive repeatable it can do change analysis and it can now give better resolutions also it is used to do the qualitative as well as the quantitative analysis of a retinal disease it's almost like a in vivo optical biopsy as you can see the histology matches the images which we get on the modern octs so this is the internationally accepted uh, nomenclature for naming various layers in the ocity uh, starting from outside from inside out uh, we can see the first uh, as a hyperreflective thin membrane posterior cortical vitreous then the pre retinal space now fiber layer then the hyperreflective layer of gcl and the ipl complex then the first hyperreflective layer of the inner nuclear layer hyper of the opl and the hypo layer of the outer nuclear layer so easier to remember is all the nuclear layers are hypo we'll skip the middle bands because they are very important going on directly to the choroidal area below the rp brooks complex we have the corio capillaries followed by the medium size sattler's layer followed by the large size haller's layer and the choroid sclera junction so the point of interest over here is are these middle five layers which are there which consist of the external limiting membrane which is seen as a very thin hyper reflective band uh inner to it is the hyperreflective band which is formed by the my myoid zone of the inner segment of the photoreceptors which are actually the golgi complexes inside to it is a hyperreflective band which is of the ellipsoid zone which is made up of the outer part of the inner segment which is mainly composed of the mitochondria very important for the functionality of these photoreceptors inner to it is the hypo reflective band out of the outer segment uh, which is mainly formed by the tubules then we have a very important hyper reflective band of the interdigitation zone between the microvilli of the rp and the connection between the cones over here uh, and finally we have a very small sometimes not seen hypo band of the melanin pigment seen in the inner part of the rp and the major part the thick band which we see is actually the rp brooks membrane complex which is identified as the thickest uh, hyper reflective band before the corio capillary start so this is very important and most of the pathologies revolve around around this also the pro prognostication depends on how is the health of these five layers in the evolution of the oct we had the first commercial ophthalmic oct device in 1996 followed by the second generation in 2000 we had the spectral domain in 2006 the swepso oct in 2012 and commercial octa in 2014 quickly we'll touch upon the principle of the oct machine so there is a light source which passes through there is a light source which passes through a reflecting membrane which reflects the light to the eye as well as to the reference mirror the rays which are incident on the eye are reflected back and the uh, reference mirror rays are also reflected back so there is a interference pattern between these these two uh, these two pathways which is detected by the inter interferometer meter and there is a interference pattern which is generated which causes a a scan signal to be generated now uh, sd oct and ss oct are newer versions of the same thing wherein in the older time domain oct the reference arm was movable caused a lot of artifacts in a sd oct the reference arm is static and also the interferometer is is now changed to a array array of detectors so that improves uh, the acquisition in swepso oct the light source itself is new so you have a longer wavelength 
also this helps the patient because it falls in the in invisible spectrum so the patient is not disturbed while taking the oct image so these are the particulars of each time domain spectral domain and swept source oct where you can see the swept source oct uses a tunable laser 1050 nanometers hence it has a uh, higher number uh, it has faster speed of uh, acquisition of the a scans per second almost 1 lakh to 4 lakhs and actual resolution has almost remained the same but the important thing is imaging of the deeper structures is better with the swept source because the wavelength is more penetrable the newer versions are coming which are ultra high resolution oct ultra wide field oct also a doppler oct but that's beyond the scope of this presentation so coming to the basics again uh, once we have a wavelength, uh, a wavelength of a light hitting a ocular structure we get a a scan which all of us know similar to a a scan of uh, uh, for the which is used for the cataract the b scan of the oct is different than the b scan of the uh, ultrasound imaging which we use uh, to image in a mad cat or a vitreous image patient here the b scan in the oct means that a multiple set of a scans are put together and we get a 2d image of the b scan which is shown in this diagram now once this b scan is arranged in a stack we get a volume identification of that particular tissue structure which is also called as c scan and when we look at the c scan from the top we get the unfast image of that particular area so a scan when we stack up the a scans together we get a b scan and when we stack up the b scans together and we look from the top we get what is called as a unfast oct image which is also important in the interpretation of this diseases so these are the common protocols which are used a raster scan which is essentially a series of parallel line scans that can be oriented in any angle and they give a very high resolution radial scan consists of 6 to 12 radial line scans and they are important because they give uh, the orientation of the lesion with respect to the fovea and the most commonly done which is the macular cube scan which uh, uses the raster scan mode in a 6 by 6 square millimeter area we also have a 3d scan which is can be used for the patient education purpose which is essentially the volume scan which we spoke about so it gives a better understanding to convince a patient for the surgery and to explain the disease to him so this is how a typical oct printout looks like the most important thing is the patient id number the patient name the examination date and uh, the signal strength the signal strength should be at least 7 and we'll come to the factors which affect the signal strength uh, this is a lso image a line scan ophthalmoscope image of the uh, retina followed by the thickness map and uh, these are the oct b scan images which are seen uh, refractive errors are auto corrected and this is the attrs circle which is 1 mm 1 mm diameter 3 mm diameter and the 6 mm diameter circles In the color coding uh, as we all know the hot colors represent uh, an area which is more swollen up these are this is the normative data which is uh, available uh, you routine range of the central subfield is usually 220 to 270 in the indian population and also we can have a mode of macular change analysis uh, to explain how better our treatment has worked in a particular patient the new oct machines have uh, high definition scans just to enumerate some of them we can also have uh, something like a smart cube if it is difficult for the patient to fix fix there is a inbuilt software called as fovea finder so it helps in imaging uh, with the unfast image we can even image the the lower part of the retina and the choroid and the unfast imaging now can be segmented at various levels namely the vitreo retinal interface the mid retina the isos junction as well as the choroid so the normative database typically in a zeiss machine is consisting of 18 to 84 years and there is a ethnical distribution which is comprising of all over the world a uh, refractive error beyond minus 12 and plus 8 may give some artifacts and as i already told you the signal strength of 8 is desirable but a minimum acceptable scan is more than 6 every oct system has a inbuilt segmentation algorithm that identifies the differences in the reflectance of the retinal layers and the borders and then place lines over the inner and the outer border of the retina 
So different machines will have uh, different uh, segmentations. Typically, spectralis and serous will take the outer retinal border as the RP, whereas the RT view will take the inter digitation zone. Uh, OCT artifacts can be divided patient related, software related, or operator related. The patient related are due to the eye movements of the patient, also because of the age of the patient. And software related, as I already told you, failed segmentations, incomplete segmentations in a case of a large PD or a large VMT. Operator related can be due to decentered scan out of registration due to uh, uh, the lid uh, drooping down. Also, in, in uh, COVID times, the mask can also be too high and it can lead to a decentered scan, a degraded image due to poor focus. So, a typical example where there is a PSC cataract. The image is there, but the values cannot be dependent upon because a large area is not taken in by the OCT. This is a patient of VMT with a, uh, a dispersed vitreous hemorrhage. So uh, the values, again, cannot be dependent upon. These are examples of the OCT artifacts. Uh, there is no color coding because the patient is uh, uh, quite young in age. Again, here, there is a software glitch. That's why most of the area over here is not imaged. Uh, in case of uh, very high cystoid macular edemas, the, there can be faulty segmentation. You can go in for a manual segmentation. You can see uh, that the, the parapobial area is just uh, measuring up to 77, 68. We know that is not true. And when this edema settles down, we actually get good segmentation and identification of the inner and the outer borders. So the reason for segmentation error can be tilted discs, papillomas, epiretinal membranes, posterior, posterior vitreous detachments, large PEDs, and irregular scars. So coming to the uh, common retinal diseases, uh, so vitreo macular interface consists of vitreo macular adhesion, VMT, and full thickness macular holes. So by international classification, the definition of VMA is peripheral PVD with the posterior cortical vitreous attachment within 3 mm of fovea if there are no secondary changes in the contour or within the retina. So and further, it can be classified into focal, broad, isolated, or concurrent. So OCT helps us to image this VMT beautifully and explain to the patient when is the need for surgery and when we, we can wait and watch. It essentially is a VMA with structural changes inside the retina, namely pseudosis, macular skysis, CME, SRF, neurosensory detachment, but there is no full thickness interruption of all the retinal layers. So this is a typical example where OCT in case of a very bad traction can actually help us surgically to plan where to introduce uh, our uh, scissors or uh, uh, high-end cutters to create a plane behind a posterior hyoid. Macular hole, all of us know the OCT staging of macular hole, very important to monitor this patient. So namely stage 1B where there is a full thickness pseudocyst, say stage 2 where there is a partial opening of the pseudo operculum because of the focal vitreous attachment, stage 3 operculated full thickness macular hole where the traction is relieved, PVD has occurred stage four where complete PVD has occurred and also the OCT helps us to show the patient how well we have done the surgery. Uh, we all know about the whole form factor where we can measure the sides of the macular hole, the macular hole walls as well as the base and give uh, chances to the patient as to what is expected outcome, especially visual outcome after the surgery. So uh, a serial OCT of the patient can help to explain the patient as to how the macular hole has worsened and serial OCT is also helped to show that uh, how better the surgery has been and how the anatomical defect at least has been achieved. We can also have scenarios like this where macular holes can be misdiagnosed. So it is always important not to just go by what is seen on the OCT, but also have a good uh, 90D as well as an indirect examination. This is a case actually of a ERM where there is a macular pseudo hole. And after surgery, uh, we can again show the OCT that the, all the layers of the retina are intact. There can be few macular hole mimics in this case. So very important, I've shown this slide to show that uh, both the eyes should always be imaged. This is actually a case of PFT where uh, indirect op ophthalmoscopy examination reveals that there is graying around the fovea and uh, another example of PFT which can uh, mimic a macular hole. Also, epiretinal membranes, it's very good to show to the patient that uh, this is an epiretinal membrane and we need to operate. But uh, the surgeon should be aware that though he has done a very good successful surgery, the OCT may not be looking that convincing because it may take about three to six months for the OCT to come back to normal and he may require some injections later on also. So 
OCT is a very useful tool, but it has to be uh, taken with a pinch of salt and explained to the patient wherever it is necessary. Uh, diabetic uh, retinopathy, very important. Uh, uh, OCT is a very important tool to plan your treatment. So this is the OCT-based classification of the DME, diffuse retinal thickening, second uh, CME-related diabetic macular edema, posterior hyaloid traction, subretinal fluid, and trans, uh, tractional retinal detachment. A typical case where you have diffuse retinal edema, and in this case where there is CME center involving, but you can also show the patient that your heart exuded clump is lying bang in the center of the fovea, so the visual prognosis is not very great in this patient. Uh, this is cystoid type of DME where the angiographic picture shows the, the petaloid leakage and the OCT supports the same. Uh, DME with neurosensitive detachment shows the role of steroid in this particular case where it is going to help us. So, Manish, can we finish it off? Yes. Uh, the tractional retinal detachment and the artifacts because of the uh, asteroids. And uh, this again highlights the heart exudates over here. The newer terminologies like drill, uh, where there is a disorientation of the retinal inner layers, hyperreflective foci, which show the inflammatory uh, origin of the DME uh, process. This is again one of the cases where it was a diabetic patient, but in the end he had a RAP lesion. So OCT helps us to uh, tide over various pathologies in, in the single retina. Is a PED of, uh, uh, related to the RAP. The OCT delineates various features, type 2 classic CNVM over here. So the fluids in the AMD, uh, our treatment of the AMD is based on the intraretinal as well as degenerative, uh, as well as the subretinal fluid which we see. A pachychoroid spectrum, uh, our newer pathologies are based on this particular terminology where OCT is a major important marker and uh, diagnostic as well as prognostic marker. This is a typical OCT of the PCV where you have M-shaped uh, PED, choroidal polyp, also a double layer sign. Double layer sign is very important in today's scenario where it can pick up either a pachychoroid neovascular membrane versus a chronic CSR. Is basically uh, the RP splits into two. Uh, RP rip can be nicely imaged based on the OCT. We can pick up pachydrusens, reticular drusens, uh, Outer retinal tubulations are a poor negative biomarker in the AMD treatment, which can be picked up with the modern OCTs. This is a pre-choroidal prep in my patient where uh, he had a chronic CNVM and we treated and the pre-choroidal cleft actually persisted. It is also a severe against the RP rip. Outer retinal corrugations, it is based on the histology of the basal infoldings. Again, a poor marker in the AMD process, multi-layered PED, where it shows that uh, this patient has already received multiple anti-VEGF injections. Uh, SHRM, uh, we can prognosticate, we can do an OCTA to see whether this is vascularized or non-vascularized. Uh, common errors in the CME interpretation can be due to optic disc fit. As you can see in this patient, this can be misdiagnosed as CME and uh, OCT can pick it up. This is pre-operative and this is post-operative, which is nicely seen that uh, uh, optic disc fit has been resolved and you have achieved attachment of the peripapillary retina. Also helpful in the vascular disorders where uh, inner layer hyperreflectivity is seen. The last few slides. Uh, SRF can have different presentation in CSR as well as VKH. In CSR, you can pick up the PEDs. ELM identification disruption is very important in photic and toxic retinopathies. EDI, uh, we, if we had time, we could discuss about EDI, which is possible in the modern ST OCT is as well as Webso's OCT where the zero delay line is shifted downwards and we can image the choroid. Very important in pachychoroid spectrum also. And But there can be diurnal variation and studies are still out as to what is normal thickness and what is normal choroidal volume. Newer terminologies like IRORA and CIRORA are coming up to prognosticate our patients. It is a negative biomarker. So in conclusion, it is OCT is an important study tool and a research tool. It is most cost-effective high-end diagnostic machine in your setup. One needs to know his own OCT machine very well and newer technologies like Okta will improve our understanding. It can be a perfect tool for patient education combined with a, a forum like uh, uh, the Zeiss platform where you can show the FFA, the OCT, the autofluorescence and multiple visits together to convince a patient how his treatment is going forward. Thank you very much and sorry for the delay.